So, today we're going to talk about how to record an excellent podcast remotely. Let's go. Point number one is don't use Zoom. Now, I understand that you're familiar with it and that your guests are familiar with it, but what is the best for you as the host and as the guest is not necessarily best for the audience. So you're gonna have to choose who's gonna get the short end of the stick, who's gonna have to go through some a little bit of discomfort. And I would advise that to be the host and the guest because those are two people while your audience could be tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and ultimately they determine the success uh, of the show. So what are the technical reasons why Zoom is uh, inadequate to record uh, good podcasts? Well, it's because it's a platform that is designed for live calls and not really to create uh, high quality recordings. The recordings are not the center of the platforms. And it's a very reliable platform, but the reason why it's reliable is because it st strips and destroys all the data from the audio and the video, keeping just the bare bone minimum uh, to, m to make sure people can see and interact. But uh, the downside is that the quality is so bad. The solutions to get high quality remote audio and video recordings is to use lo local recordings. So that's basically the audio and video that uh, reaches your computer but doesn't go through the internet. It's not uh, being compressed, it's not traveling, it's not subjected to glitches, it's the audio that is just in your computer and that your equipment generated before it travels. And there are platforms like Riverside, Zencaster, Squadcast, and uh, even StreamYard now that create local recordings. This way you're gonna be able to have high quality recordings and separated audio and video tracks of both the host and the guest. Now, there is a way that Zoom can be useful and that is in the context of uh, a double ender. A double ender is a process where the host manually uh, records both the audio and the video with a separate software while the call is happening and the guest does the same on his or her side and after the recording is done, they just send it to the editor or whoever is editing and the person is gonna use the Zoom track as a, what's called a scratch track. So just as a reference, so they can align the visual, they can align the audio and then take the Zoom track and throw it in the bin and everything is aligned and it feels like that's how it was recorded in the first place with the high quality local recordings. This is called a double ender and it's actually the highest quality um, that you can achieve even compared to Riverside, even compared to Squadcast, you can easily do a comparison on your own, you will notice it. Now, the downside of this is that if the speakers are not tech savvy uh, and something goes wrong, uh, the interview might be lost because the host has no way to monitor what's happening on the guest side, has no control, so that is a risk. You, it's something that you would do with the, like a remote host or co-host or people in an industry where they use recording software regularly and they understand it fairly well. The second thing to do to get an excellent remote podcast is to brief the guest on recording etiquette. What does that mean? Well, it means that in a traditional studio where uh, the guest and the host are in the same room and there is a technical person like an audio engineer or podcast producer. This person is in charge of the recording phase, making sure that the lights are correct, the uh, microphones are placed correct, and they will let people know and adjust things on the fly. Now, when this person is uh, not present or it's not hired or whatever the case may be, this responsibility to monitor and be in charge of the recordings falls onto the host. Okay, and that's because not everything can be fixed in editing. So if you want to have a good quality product for your audience, some things must be done correctly from the recording, from the get go. There is no fixing for a lot of things. And I see a lot of the times that the hosts don't have the awareness that they are actually in charge of, of this process. And so they just let the guest do whatever they, they feel like doing with no sort of guidance or boundaries. So the guest goes on the show with the assumption that the host is the person that uses the gear regularly to do the podcast. So they understand the podcast, they understand the production system. And if there's something that they need to do, they will be told. And uh, other than that, they just behave how they will behave normally during the conversation. 
Now, if the guest is not briefed or guided in any sort of way, you will get things like the person being too far away from the mic and uh, this would cause a lot of uh, echo in the recording, a lot of room noise, or they, for example, they would uh, click a pen or bump their feet or hit the table during the recording, unaware, but uh, they would not have this kind of understanding or they will be sitting uh, too far off from the camera or have the camera pointed at a weird angle or not looking into the camera. And this would create a disengagement to the audience and just create a worse experience overall. So as a host, learn about recording etiquette, give the guest a little checklist or just let them know, like in a two minutes conversation, what you would like them to do to have the best possible results so they can look and sound their best. Another essential thing for your remote recordings is the internet connection. All these softwares will have a hard time operating and producing a good recording if there is not good internet connection on both the host and the guest side. Now, to get it good, obviously find a good provider that offers good upload and download speed, but as well try to be connected via Ethernet, so the cable into the router and not via Wi-Fi. It's much more stable and uh, it will produce a, a more reliable connection for you. In the case of the guest, I understand that you don't have a lot of control over that, though during the briefing you could let them know not to you know, not to record a podcast at Starbucks or some public Wi-Fi that might be unreliable. And if they're rec recording at home, then to make sure that during the call, the bandwidth of their internet is safe and preserved. What I mean is that, that their kids are not playing a video game in the other room using all of the bandwidth, all the upload and download speed. It has to be stable. Maybe someone is streaming Netflix at 4K or, or downloading games or something, you know? So just have an awareness of, or be like, it's a 30 minute conversation. Let's just make sure that the things are good and everything will be fine. So any kind of processes in the, in the back that is eating up your internet, just switch those off if possible and have the guests do the same too. Moving on, have separate audio and video files for each speaker. Now, the platforms that I mentioned before, Riverside, Zancaster, and so on, those ones uh, allow you to do that, but let's talk about the importance of doing this, okay? That's because uh, if you have separate files for each speaker, it makes the podcast more editable. If you don't, you basically uh, have the hands tied of the editor. He cannot do many things, right? So that's because the voice of each person as well as the image has unique needs that must be addressed in isolation. So for example, if a person needs more bass added to the voice, uh, but the other person doesn't, if they're both on the same file and I start adding it, it's gonna inf influence and unbalance the other person. I don't have access to those in isolation. Yes, there are some tools to kind of like go around, but it's not optimal. The result is much worse. If there are sec sections of a crosstalk where people talk on top of each other, if the files are separate, I can mute one person while retaining the other person speaking. So I can do a lot of adjustments. We color correction, same thing. You want to make sure that one change doesn't influence both speakers at the same time. Now let's go back to the Zoom example for a second. Zoom records normally in 720 pixels, both people, okay? So 720 pixels is the total frame, which means you're gonna have one person being about 300 pixels and another one being 300 pixels. Now, if I use the other softwares and I get each speaker on a separate file and every file is full HD, so uh, 1080 pixels. Now this person is 1080 and this is 1080, when I put them together as opposed to be 300 and 300. So it's basically three times as much resolution. And I'm not even talking about 4K here. I'm just talking about simple 1080p recorded locally. That's how critical this is. Another point, have the guests use an acceptable microphone. Now this is where m most people have a hard time. Now that's because a lot of people, a lot of guests, they don't have a microphone in their home. So how do you address this? I would say as acceptable, we can consider, for example, the headphones from Apple when you buy an, like an iPhone that have the microphone, 
you know, the attached to the headphones or maybe some headsets. If you have, uh, you know, maybe you game or you do some meetings, you, uh, they might have that. So I'm not talking necessarily as a microphone like this. Um, that would be ideal, but I understand a lot of people don't have those. But uh, address this during the meeting. So if people actually want to sound good and they really, really value the, the interview, they have the time to buy one. Sometimes they can be as cheap as $20 for a USB or dynamic microphone. They're not going to be the best, but it's exponentially better than the microphone that's built in to your laptop, maybe where there is the fan making noise, spinning around, it's far away from your mouth. It's going to be a nightmare, okay? So try to get uh, the guests to understand the importance of, of having the, an acceptable microphone and set standards for your show. Because if as a, as a standard you have that you need to have at least the headphones, at least headphones with built-in mic or something, uh, otherwise you're not coming on, that sets a boundary and they're welcome to come whenever they're ready to meet that uh, minimum requirement. And honestly, if a person is not willing to meet that minimum requirement, they likely don't take the, the appearance on your show very seriously. They probably just will not be a good guest for the show either. So just let the person know before uh, because at the end of the day, the show, yes, it is a conversation, but at the same time is the aim is to produce uh, digital assets that will be used by the audience. If the digital asset is no good, the whole purpose is just coming down, right? Think about this as well. In an interview style podcast, the center of the attention is the guest. The guest is the person that speaks the most, okay? So maybe 80% the guest speaks and 20% the host, right? So the guest audio is the most important. So there is no point for the host to have a $400 microphone and have the guest having a $0 microphone when they are 80% of the actual podcast, right? So let's really, really focus on getting the help to the guests they need to make sure they sound their best. And my last point is get the show edited professionally. Now, that's because when you record remotely and not in a control studio environment, the likelihood of you needing more uh, audio and video help is much, much higher, as well as you want to make sure that uh, the content is easy to consume, easy to digest, to improve uh, your audience retention. So, you know, having multiple camera switches, having overlays, having the speaker's name coming up, call to actions coming up, okay? All these things can help conversion. Recommending the videos uh, of your other episodes can help uh, what's called um, the session time within YouTube, okay? So you really want to invest on an engagement, audience retention, and a better quality product that is worth the audience time and attention. If you want to see examples of how a well-produced remote podcast look like, you could check uh, Chris Williamson's uh, Modern Wisdom podcast, as well as uh, Mikahila Peterson, as well as uh, Valuetainment, those episodes, especially during the pandemic. Uh, absolutely beautiful. You can see multiple camera switches, uh, good lighting, tiny little touches, overlays, and just the pace is very, very good, very easy to consume, good titles and everything else on top of it as well. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed the episode, or if you have any questions, just uh, write them down in the comments, like the video, subscribe, and come back for more. I'll see you next time. Take care.